Well, hello folks. This is just going to be a much shorter video than the last two on Hammer Horror. But it's about the business of collecting uh, Hammer on DVD and also some of the books, uh, which are somewhat tricky to get hold of. For some reason, the Hammer fandom goes in for a lot of limited releases where they make things really very difficult to get. Uh, you know, limited runs of 6,000 um, or, for example, in the case of these, they had a run and then they're impossible to get. Um, this film, for example, came out in the cinema and then it was never actually released. Uh, so there, there's all sorts of uh, things that make a Hammer quite hard to get hold of, especially if you're here in the UK. Now, I will say that um, the regions of the various Blu-rays and the DVDs uh, do make a difference here. If you're in America, there's a company called Shout Factory that has brought out a lot of the Hammer DVDs. Those ones aren't available here, uh, although I am, I have read that US Blu-rays do work here, but post now is extremely prohibitive, the cost of post uh, to, to bring them over here. So unless they're already in the country, you can buy them on eBay, for example. Uh, the Shout Factory ones aren't a goer for most of us, unless you're literally made of money. Uh, I mean, I've got some money, friends, but not that much money to um, pay, pay for individual Shout Factory DVDs. So um, the whole business of collecting Hammer, really, you have to delineate where you're going to start, what you're going to get, what's in focus, what's out of focus. Now, my spreadsheet, which I um, uh, made available on my big guide, which I released on Wednesday, which uh, I'd encourage you to check out. Um, I have put a link to the previous two video in the show notes. And on the first video, you'll find the spreadsheet. Now, on that spreadsheet, you can filter in all sorts of different ways. If you take out the comedies, which you'd, I doubt anybody's going to want to collect. If you're into Hammer, you're not really looking to get, you know, Up the Creek, for example, or Watch It Sailor, <laughs> for example. So take out the frippers comedies that crop up in the 50s there, um, you know, or on the buses, things like that. Take out the comedies, take out any dramas that are there, um, and that basically leaves you with the horrors, the thrillers, the adventure films, uh, maybe take out action as well, unless you really want to see Shatter, just take out action. Um, it leaves you with about 89 films. Um, and then there's a case, well, do you want them all or do you just want the core ones, the important ones? Um, and really the best way of thinking about uh, how to collect them is via the distributor, because each distributor... Um, I mean, with James Carreras being a business genius as he was, couldn't have foreseen the DVD market or the video market in years to come. So when he gave the distribution deals to Fox, Warner, etc., he also sold the ongoing distribution rights, you know, for future media, um, which meant that the ones with Fox stayed with Fox, the ones with Warner stayed with Warners, etc., now, in this country, it's a little bit less complicated, I guess, because I think a lot of their films were distributed locally by Lion Liongate, I think it was. Um, so that means that more of them are on the same label here. But still, you have to go to different companies for different films. It's especially a pain when it comes to... Dracula and Frankenstein, uh, because those are the ones that were shipped out to Universal, uh, some of the later ones with the Warners, etc. So what is the best way to delineate? Well, the first thing is that the uh, Columbia deal, do you remember I, I mentioned they had the five Columbia deal, uh, where they had five films a year with Columbia co-produced, 
And it just so happens that all of those films are available on these gorgeous box sets that were brought out by Indicator, Powerhouse, I think they're called, um, in limited edition of 6,000. And you can see I've got number 3412 here. Now, because these are limited edition, they're actually quite hard to get hold of. And in some places, they'll be charging upwards of £150 for these. Now, I can tell you, friends, exclusively, because I'm a world-class researcher, I did not pay more than £40 for any of these. Some of them I even paid less than £40. Where there's a will, there's a way. Ain't that right, Rodney? So also what my old man used to say to me. So if you're intrepid, you can still find these for a reasonably low price, £40 or, or less. Um, if you're in the UK and I find, I got all of these within the space of a couple of days and I, they all arrive the next day. So it is possible. Maybe after I put this video out, maybe less so. But basically, if you count, there's four on each of these box sets and uh, four times six is what? 24. So 24 Columbia movies there. Pretty much all of the Columbia films they did Apart from, I believe, the Robin Hood one, which is in a separate box set. If you want the Robin Hood, there's a separate kind of double box set with the two Robin Hood movies. I'm not really interested in the Hammer Robin Hood, I have to be honest. So I haven't collected those. Um, these ones will do. Now, one of the things about these limited edition box sets is that they're absolutely packed with extras. There's absolutely tons of... Uh, interviews and documentaries and audio commentaries and extras there which actually are pretty good because they, they they feature um, that cast of characters that those historians Junie and Rigby and the like um, you know the, the, the crew of Hammer Nerds so they're particularly good because they feature my favorite DVD extra team on basically all of these there's a few where Wayne Kinsey comes in, but he's an even bigger nerd. He, he's the guy who wrote these books here. So if you can get hold of these, these are the best in class, the creme de la creme for the Columbia years, the early 60s, okay? Um, if you can't get hold of the box sets, they are available from Powerhouse in the individuals, right? But of course, buying... 24 individual DVDs for a tenner each is going to set you back what 240 quid. Four of these for 40 pounds, uh, six of those for 40 pounds. I mean, it could probably work out about the same, probably work out about the same to be honest. Um, especially if you they do, they've got a sale on at the moment, or they did have a sale on last I checked at Powerhouse, so you could actually do it for cheaper buying them individually. But anyway, those are all the Columbia films. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I should mention the uh, the original Curse of Frankenstein, Dracula, and where's the other one here? I would say the Mummy, for whatever reason, are not part of any sets that I could find. Right, so you have to get these three originals on their own like that in these. Um, they do these uh, double plays, they're called double plays, brought out by, um, there, there you can see it was for Lion, Lion Gate, and who is the distributor of these? Uh, Lion Gate, Lion Gate I want to say. Um, you can see like it's the same crew on the DVDs, Marcus Hearn, Judy and Rigby. So it's the same guys on the on these extras that are on these extras. So it makes for, a, even though it's coming out with a different company, it's basically the same people, which it, which makes for some nice continuity across all these sets. Um, so yeah, now for some reason, I don't know why they do this. Maybe some film nerd can explain to me. They, they, they bring out these double plays where you get the Blu-ray and then there's a DVD version as well. Basically, all the contents on the Blu-ray are available on the DVD. Why you'd want that, I don't know. Because presumably, you just play the DVD. I mean, do they release this for people who don't have a Blu-ray player? 
<laughs> in which case, why are they buying a Blu-ray in the first place? So uh, I don't quite understand the thinking behind the double play. Maybe there's some logic to it that, uh, that you know, collectors may be able to explain to me. Um, so, so yeah, so you have to get those three individually. But then, basically, most, you can then think, well, from Columbia, you would then go to the Seven Arts, the the Warner Seven Arts um, Fox deal, the, the, the Fox Seven Arts deal years. Um, oh, yeah, there is also the small matter of the Universal years. And it just so happens that this set here, the Hammer Horror 8 film collection, rather usefully collects all of the Universal films in one place. Now, I will say that there are some doublers here. Uh, so Brides of Dracula does not appear on the big box sets there. So you, you, that's where you can get Brides of Dracula. Uh, Evil of Frankenstein, this is the only place I have that. Kiss of the Vampire is not on any of the other sets. And... Um, think maybe Nightmare. Nightmare is not available. Oh no, I do have Nightmare somewhere else. Okay, so those three, Evil of Frankenstein, Brides of Dracula, Kiss of the Vampire, and Par Paranoiac maybe. Paranoiac. So those are the four films from Universal that I couldn't find anywhere else that are available on this set here. I think this came in on a US import see it's from Universal itself um, but yes kind of kind of useful to have them all in one place now I did end up rather foolishly buying another set which has the same Universal films on it so you can this is where it gets quite confusing there's this set as well Hammer 4 films Curse of the Mummy's Tomb Scream of Fear the Gorgon, and the two faces of Dr. Jekyll. No extras or anything. Um, and I basically, all of those films are on the sets in superior quality with tons more extras. So this was basically a waste of money for me. Um, but I got it before I discovered these sets. It was already in the mail. So that's what happened there. So yeah, don't fall into that trap. Um... What else? Um, yeah, the Mummy Shroud, for some reason, if you're collecting the Mummy films, um, also you have to get separately. And it's the same crew on the extras there. But for some reason, the Mummy Shroud is not available on the other sets. So anyway, um, easiest thing to do then, you've got Columbia sorted, you've got Universal sorted, and you've got the three early classics sorted. So then we're moving into the Seven Arts years and the deal with Fox. And basically all of those films are collected on this 21 disc DVD set by Studio Canal. Now I've got a, it's a DVD set, but they are in high definition um they are pretty nice quality and more importantly many of them come with extras and things from basically the same team the same team who did all these did all these so they basically work together as a set right so i don't know what calculations we're doing but we've got three here another four here which makes seven 24 there, 21 here. So 21 and 24 is 45, plus another 4, 49, 50, 51, 52. So we've got 52 of all of our films there. So where this gets a little bit annoying is that certain films um, in this set... There was an older set called the Ultimate Hammer Collection. And for some reason, on this set, some of the 
films are the older version with no extras or anything and some of the films are the new version with the kind of deluxe DVD extra crew uh, you know Jonathan Rigby and, and friends um, but th that crew did for example with The Devil Rides Out they did put together uh, a version with Studio Canal they just didn't bother putting it on there or uh, another example is the Scars of Dracula, which I found in HMV. The Scars of Dracula on there is an old version. The one on here has got Inside Scars of Dracula documentary on it with the same crew, basically. Okay, so um, yeah, there's a couple of little annoyances, but in general, this is the set you want. So um, then pretty much you're there. You've got most of the films, apart from, rather annoyingly, due to various um, legal wranglings, you don't have lots of the Frankenstein films and you don't have most of the Dracula films. Now, the Frankenstein films, uh, for whatever reason, I found more difficult to collect than the Draculas. Um, the Revenge of Frankenstein is in a beautiful edition here. So that's the second one. The Evil of Frankenstein is on this one. So that's the third one. Um, but, and then uh, we've got Frankenstein Creative Woman on there and the Horror of Frankenstein on there. But we're missing the absolutely fantastic Frankenstein must be destroyed. And we're also missing Frankenstein and the monster from hell. And for whatever reason, both of those are extremely expensive on the Blu-rays that I tried to find. So I ended up watching them on Amazon Prime, where they're available in good quality. No extras or anything, obviously, but they are available. So I, I got two digital copies for the last two Frankensteins, which is a little bit annoying, but, um, <clears throat> you know, when you're getting DVDs, you don't really want to be paying like £50 for one DVD um, of, a, of a film like Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell, uh, especially if there's limited extras on there, etc. So, yeah, that's Frankenstein. <coughs> for Dracula... Um, <clears throat> There's the first Dracula, the um, the Bride of Dracula is on here, that's the second Dracula, right? Third one is the Dracula Prince of Darkness, which is actually on here. Um, then we've got Dracula Has Risen from the Grave, I've just got a bog standard DVD of that. Couldn't find a decent Blu-ray edition. Very kind of bare bones. Doesn't have any extras or anything. But it does the job. Okay. Taste the Bug of Dracula. The same. Bare bones DVD. Now for some reason. These movies are out with. Warners I think it is. Yeah Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers don't seem to believe in DVD extras. Uh, extra packaging. Audio commentaries. They just release bare bones. And the DVDs, as far as I've seen, are just bare bones. It's just like, oh, well, here's a film of Blu-ray quality, nothing else. So Warner's letting the side down. The other company's fantastic. Warner's, shite. But still, I have copies of these films. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Taste of Blood of Dracula is the fifth one. Um, what happens in the Dracula series after that? Uh, then, bizarrely, I've got... Scars of Dracula twice somewhere, if I can find them. Uh, yeah, so there's Scars of Dracula, which I showed you. It's got the extras on it. This is a Studio Canal version, which is nice. I also have Scars of Dracula on there. So this is the slightly annoying thing, you know. You've got Dracula, Prince of Darkness and Scars of Dracula, but you're, you're missing these two because they came out with Warners.
really irritating. Um, and it doesn't have the extras, so I ended up getting the Scars of Dracula again. Um, and then there's just the two modern ones, or the three modern ones are Dracula AD 1972. Again, it's Blu-ray, but being Warner's, there's bugger all on it. Yeah, it includes theatrical trailer. Um, Satanic Rites of Dracula, again, Blu-ray. But, but Warner's just don't believe in extras or anything, so they bugger all on it. Yeah, special theatre, theatrical trainer. Thanks, Warner Brothers. Um, and then finally, we've got a Signal 1 version of The Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires, starring Duke Julie Edge. And again, bugger all on there. But at least I've got Dracula complete, okay? So pretty much, oh yeah, and then we've got, if you want to collect the mummy films, um, you see this is a slightly annoying thing, that's why I'm doing this video, they're not available altogether, right? They're not, there's no like Dracula set or mummy set, you have to kind of get them, you know, disparately. Um, but with the mummy, you've got the original there, second mummy I think, uh, is there, Curse of the Mummy's Tomb. Gorgeous looking film in this Blu-ray. Um, I mean, really, B-movie like that, so many gubbins and DVD extras and things. Pretty um, pretty impressive, considering, uh, considering the movie. Um, then we've got Mummy's Shroud, which has got this extra. Quite why it wasn't included on the main set, I don't know. Probably a distribution thing again. Just gonna blame Warner Brothers. I feel like it's Warner Brothers' fault somewhere along the line. Um, that was John Gilling's last film, Mummy Shroud. Also the last film at Bray Studios, so of historical importance. Um, uh, <coughs> and then the final Mummy film, uh, is that on here? Is that the one with Valerie Leon on it? Blood from the Mummy's Tomb. There you go. The one with Valerie Leon on it. And in fact, I think she appears on the extras as well, if I'm not mistaken. So that is that. Um, Mummy, obviously, is very much the third of those three franchises, but if you're interested... Um, and then, really, the only thing left to get uh, beyond that would be basically the late sleazy kind of lesbian vampire 70s stuff, much beloved of the horror nerds <laughs> and uh, proper horror show, etc. Um, as you heard yesterday. And basically, I've got all of these here. So... Again, slightly annoyingly, there's no Karnstein Trilogy box set. But there is this old Hammer House of Horror Vampire collection, which somewhat weirdly has Countess Dracula, Twins of Evil and Vampire Circus. So three actually not connected films. And it was brought up by Carlton. Bare bones, no extras or anything. I'm pretty sure Twins of Evil has got a kind of... Bells and Whistles Blu-ray, but given that I already had it on this, I thought there was no point, um, you know, but if you want to get those uh, more kind of interesting 70s ones, then there's, for the Karnstein trilogy, The Vampire Lovers, Ingrid Pitt, uh, there's a documentary on there, there's our crew look. Marcus Hearn and Julie, Jonathan Rigby. There's my boys. That's what you want to see, basically. You want to see those two. They're, they're your extra crew. Um, then we've got Lust for a Vampire, which is the second one in the current scene trilogy. There you go. There's our featurette. Hammer in 1970. Um, I'm pretty sure it'll be those two again. And uh, we've got Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde, of course. 
on a special edition double feature Blu-ray brought out by Studio Canal. Um, I think I actually bought this in store. I saw it in HMV and picked it up. Although I did not pay twelve ninety nine for it, I'm pretty sure I got it on that two for fifteen pound deal thing. Um, but yeah, it's a feature out on there as well, and it's uh, it's it's my boys uh, Rigby and Hearn <laughs> yet again. Absolute whores they are for the DVD extra. Um, and then uh, I, I paid £3 from this odd little website where I was looking for rare films for this Hammer Horror The Warner Brothers Years from 2018. Special documentary made by the lads, made by Hearn and Rigby and friends, um, looking at the late Hammer era after they had finished with this deal. Uh, with the Seven Arts, and they were with Warners and various and EMI and various other uh, partnerships. Um, and I haven't watched this yet because it only came today, so I've got that to do. But uh, I'll be watching that with interest. And then I've got—I mean, there's a couple of other little things. A fan's guide to Hammer House of Horror. That's got all the usual, all the usual guys on it as well. Uh, I have to say absolute waste of money rubbish um this world of hammer which is special it's narrated by oliver reed and it was a kind of set of um documentaries that hammer put out themselves looked you know on various different themes now basically every single one of these i'm pretty sure appears somewhere or other as an extra on these discs between them somewhere uh, they just, they just kind of crop up as an extra feature, but uh, it's kind of handy. I mean, they're not they're kind of a bit light those documentaries, but they're twenty thirty minutes to you know on a particular theme, um, and they've got Oliver Reed narrating. So, and then um, in terms, if you're wondering where I got those contracts and things from, it's in this rather interesting book by David Peary. Hammer a cinematic case study. You can see it came with this folder, and this folder has got all of these extra materials there, um, which was pretty interesting. I don't see this cited much in the literature, and I can't actually remember what I paid for it either, but it was just one of those things. I thought, well, I needed something to give me an edge on the, <laughs> on the uh, film. On my definitive guide so I got this um, in terms of the books really these are the three you want Hammer films the Bray studio years Hammer films the Elstree studio years and especially this one the unsung heroes this is fantastic this unsung heroes book um, but like these they were printed in limited editions so they're bloody hard to get hold of and they cost a pretty penny too I think I ended up getting all three of these from eBay. This one on a US import. Um, and it, they all cost as much as these sets, let's just say. These ones did. Um, but they really are probably the best resources. I mean, the level of detail in Unsung Heroes is incredible. But also in these. I mean, he goes through scene by scene and tells you which stage... <laughs> which stage they were set, you know, it, it, it's just mind-blowing level of detail. And one of the things I've noticed is that the Little Shop of Horrors fanzine tends to be the source material a lot of the time. Uh, those fanzines tend to be where they pull the interview quotes from in all of these books. Um, but Kinsey is all over that, and he, he's pretty good at quoting relevant material where necessary. Uh, very detailed orientated uh, writer. Um, in terms of the others here, I mean, this one is a bit throwaway, to be honest. Uh, it's a bit throwaway. Um, but these two, the Encyclopedia of Hammer Films and this one, the Exhaustive Filmography, are pretty comprehensive. This one pulls from the Little Shop of Horrors too, quite a lot, I noticed. This one a little bit less so, 
but pretty much between those five books there and what one or two others I, uh, I I used, pretty much everything you'd ever want to know about Hammer uh, there. But if you want to only get one or two, it's these ones that you want to get. All right, so a little bit kind of higgledy piggledy, but uh, there we are. I'm on my <laughs> I'm on my phone. I try to clean. Everybody always tells me my phone's got a smudge on it, but um, there we are. Let me know if you've got any questions, if I missed anything. Oh, Quatermass, Quatermass in the Pit. Um, Quatermass in the Pit is actually on here, but the Quatermass Experiment and Quatermass 2 are not. Um, and I have not been able to find a UK edition of those anywhere but they are available for free on Amazon Prime if you've got a membership with Amazon Prime which I do um so you, yeah you can watch Quatermass on there but for some reason you can't get them in Blu-ray you can in America and you can in Australia but you can't here in Blighty which is a bizarre situation but um like you know I'm not forking out for US import shout factory releases um you know, I may have got into Hammer, but not that much yet. Maybe there'll be a day where I'll get the, sh the Shout Factory ones. All right. Hopefully this was at least somewhat helpful to anybody uh, looking for Hammer stuff. Like I said, if you're a US fan, the Shout Factory stuff is best in class there. Um, although I'm, I'm led to believe Blu-ray is region free, so you may have less trouble but don't quote me on that all right so long for now everyone have a good weekend if you like this video be sure to like and subscribe you can join the channel for thousands of hours of past shows in the archive and hundreds of videos if you have any questions you can leave a super chat or a super thanks and i'll be sure to pick it up during my weekly office hours which run every tuesday afternoon I also provide courses at the Academic Agency, which I encourage people to buy. Thousands of students now have taken the Trivium to improve their skills in writing, logic and rhetoric. Just three of many courses available. Buy it now. But most importantly of all, friends, get out.